Hello all, so now we are starting with power spectrum estimation. So it's a new topic and it is under the subject called DSP, which is digital signal processing. So let's start without any further ado. So what is power spectrum estimation? So basically what we need is that every power spectrum is needed in order to estimate the spectrum of any wide stationary process. So what frequency components are connected? So for a given any random process X of n, right? Let's say this is X of n. It is any random process. And for time being, let's assume it is wide set stationary. And in our entire discussion, actually, we will be assuming this WSS wide set stationarity. Okay. So I hope you all know what is wide set stationarity. So basically WSS, I'm just giving the overview. The main thing is that in WSS process, the mean that is all the statistical parameters remain stationary with time. So if you will see today, the mean will be same for the process. After 10 years, it will be the same, right? So there is one strict mathematical definition and mathematical constraints behind WSS, but we will not go deep into that. The main thing is that for a given process X of N, what we want is that we have to estimate the frequencies in its power spectrum so that how much power is contained in this signal. That is our main goal to estimate. And for that, we have two methods. First is the parametric, sorry, non-parametric methods. And second is the parametric methods. So before starting the particular method, let me just give you the brief overview and the brief uh, outline that how we are going to find this power spectrum estimation. So for that, we know that the autocorrelation sequence, let's denote it by CXX of tau, where tau is the time lag. So what is CXX of tau? So for a given process, okay, so for a, for a given uh, statistical process X of N, the CSS that is nothing but autocorrelation sequence. It is called autocorrelation sequence is given by basically what its physical meaning is that there it is the expected value of the time lagged version and the X of N that is X of N shifted by tau and the original X of N its expected value is given by this autocorrelation sequence and from Weiner Kircher's theorem. Okay. I don't know the exact spelling. So I'm just writing Weiner Kircher's theorem. We know that if we take the Fourier transform of this autocorrelation sequence, then we'll get the power spectral density. So this will be our uh, outline that firstly for a given random process X of N, this is our random process. We will be finding its autocorrelation sequence by using this relation. This is the autocorrelation sequence. And after finding this autocorrelation sequence, we will take its Fourier transform and then we will take PhD and PhD is nothing but our power spectrum estimation. Okay. So this is a major overview. Now there are some drawbacks for this process. Okay, so now I am trying to explain why it is called estimation. Okay, why this term is there estimation. So simply it means that since there is estimation term, we can say that it's not the true value. It is the estimated value of the some true value, right? So why it is called estimation? Let's try to see that. So it is called estimation because the process, the outline that is finding the autocorrelation sequence and then taking its Fourier transform is having following limitations. So the first limitation is that the sequence that is the random process X of N may not be known for all N for all N. So what happens is that only finite segment is known of X of N is known and we need it in order to find our autocorrelation sequence because the autocorrelation sequence we need the entire uh, terms from n equals from minus n to plus n and the n will tends from uh, n will tends to infinity. So let me write it that what I am saying that the autocorrelation sequence is given by the expectation value that we already wrote in last slide and it if you will solve it is something like this. So here as you can see the n is ranging from minus n to n and n is tending to infinity and for that purpose only and due to this reason, we can say that we need our X of N okay, from minus infinity to infinity. And this is not possible. Only finite segment of X of N is available in practice. In reality, this is the case. 
and the good example for this is that the seismic waves the earthquake waves so they are available for a short very short duration right so let me write earthquake waves right they are available for a, for very short duration so this is the first then second problem is that the spectral characteristics may change over time so that wss is a theoretical assumption but in practicality it is not possible that if you will see after 10 years the same process it will be having the same mean right so the spectral characteristics may change over time and especially when we are collecting the data right when we are observing this x of n at that time especially when it changes it's it's a problem and the third and the last is that sometimes x of n is often corrupted with noise okay this is also practical thing so often corrupted and therefore in practicality or in real situations we can't exactly estimate our power spectrum and that's why we call it the estimation so we can't get the true value but we get some estimation right so basically that will this will be our outline that finding auto correlation sequence and then taking its fourier transform right so basically there are two techniques first is non parametric and second is parametric so let's start one by one so i will be starting with param non parametric first in next lecture so stay tuned thank you